Cryogenic carbon is a general term for thermally altered carbon-containing products that form during incomplete combustion of biomass and fossil fuels. Rather than burning completely and converting all of the organic molecules into gases like carbon dioxide, some of the material remains behind, creating pyrogenic carbon. Pyrogenic carbon can take many forms, from lightly charred, readily degradable material to highly condensed soot. This range of forms is referred to as the combustion continuum. Chemically speaking, the main commonalities among all of the forms of pyrogenic carbon along the continuum are high carbon content, other elements are preferentially lost during combustion, and an abundance of aromatic structures. But other characteristics, like the overall look, size, and degradability, vary greatly along the continuum. Because pyrogenic carbon takes many forms, and because it is often found in a variety of heterogeneous mixtures, like soils and sediments, a number of methods have been developed to isolate, quantify, and characterize it. These can be grouped into five categories. Physical techniques rely on differences in size or density to separate pyrogenic carbon from other soil components, following the same principles as physical separation of soil organic matter fractions. Chemical oxidation techniques work by oxidizing the sample. Certain compounds along the pyrogenic carbon continuum are less susceptible to oxidation than other components of the soil, so they are left behind while the other components are lost. Thermal techniques, like hydrogen pyrolysis, use high temperature techniques to decompose or burn off organic material in the sample. Pyrogenic carbon remains behind because it is more resistant to high temperatures. Spectroscopic techniques use radiation, such as x-rays, infrared, or magnetic, to investigate the chemical bonds in a sample. Certain bonds are indicative of pyrogenic carbon compounds, and those can be identified and quantified. Molecular markers are identifiable molecules that are unique to pyrogenic carbon. Mixed samples can be decomposed by chemical or thermal techniques to liberate those molecular markers, which can then be identified and quantified to give an estimate of pyrogenic carbon in the sample. All of these methods have pros and cons, and some are more appropriate for different applications than others. There are several reviews and comparisons of these methods in the literature. The method that we will learn about today involves a particular type of molecular marker, benzene polycyclic carboxylic acids, or BPCAs for short. BPCAs aren't technically present in the pyrogenic material, but they are produced through a chemical reaction in a laboratory. They are formed from polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, or PAHs, which are a main component of pyrogenic material. When nitric acid is added and the samples are heated, carbon atoms in the PAHs are oxidized, which breaks bonds to form different BPCAs. BPCAs will form from PAHs, but not other types of organic matter. This way, BPCAs act as an indicator of the presence of PAHs, and an estimate of the pyrogenic carbon content of the soil can be made. We'll go to the lab with Michelle now to see the BPCA method in action. To start, subsamples of ground, homogenized soils are weighed into digestion tubes, and 70% nitric acid is added to each one. It is good practice to also run blanks and standards. Here, you see a very dark sample, which is a 5% pyrogenic carbon standard. The soil acid mixtures are placed in a digestion block, which goes into an oven set to 170 degrees Celsius for 8 hours. Once the samples have digested, they are filtered and combined with ultra-pure water and phthalic acid. The phthalic acid is used as an internal standard. For a nice explanation of internal standards, see this website. Next, the samples are run through resin columns to purify them and remove charged, non-target material. The samples go through more preparation steps, and eventually they will be analyzed by High Performance Liquid Chromatography, or HPLC for short. HPLC works similarly to the gas chromatograph that we saw in the greenhouse gas lab, but with a liquid mobile phase rather than gas. Each BPCA compound produces a unique peak, which can be identified and quantified. A detailed video of the entire BPCA method can be found in this paper and at the website shown here. That's all for today's lab. 
to recap, we saw an introduction to pyrogenic carbon and the combustion continuum. We had a discussion of the purpose of and theory behind the BPCA technique, and we saw a demonstration of the BPCA procedure in the laboratory 